For the safety of your smile, use Pepsodent twice a day. See your dentist twice a year. Lever Brothers Company presents the Pepsodent Show, My Friend Irma, created by Cy Howard and starring Marie Wilson as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgotten. body is 84% water. This can be a dangerous thing. Why do I say that? Well, I live with Irma Peterson, and I'm positive her brain has gone down for the third time. <laughs> you want proof? Well, the other day we were going to see a movie, but Irma insisted we go to the beauty parlor first and take the full treatment. So I said, honey, why such a big fuss over just seeing a movie? And Irma said... Well, we're going to see Command Decision with Clark Gable, Van Johnson, Walter Pigeon, and as long as there are no women in the picture, who knows, they may want to take us out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, what can you expect from a girl who took an extra nickel with her when she saw sorry wrong numbers so she could complete the call? <laughs> and today being Valentine's Day, I am going through an experience I wouldn't wish on a guinea pig. Irma is writing Valentine poems she's going to give to Al, and she's testing them out on me. Uh, Jane, uh, how do you like this one? To Al, I'm glad you came my way, for you are cute with a capital K. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Well, then how about this one? To Al, you are priceless, that is true. No wonder they offer a reward for men like you. <laughs> Only in 16 states. Oh. Look, Irma, you're not getting any place. Why don't you run down to the corner and buy a card? Oh, but it'll be better if it comes right from my heart. But, honey, you have a talent for saying the wrong thing. The wrong thing? Jane, how can you make a statement like that? Honey, do I have to prove to you you always say the wrong thing? Take yesterday when your boss, Mr. Clyde, said he had to make a court appearance with some brief. Oh, I didn't think he should go out in public in his shorts. <laughs> I see. And when Richard's mother told you she'd just returned from a week at the Colonial House in Palm Springs, what did you say? Well, it was a natural mistake. When she said Colonial House, I asked her how she got along with Martha Washington. <laughs> now will you go out and buy a card? No, Jane. Al is my only boyfriend, and I think on this romantic day I should write a personal message. The defense rests. Jane... I wonder what Al's going to get me. Well, let's think. One year, he brought you a bag of circus peanuts. Last year, he brought you a bouquet of flowers. Oh, do you think he'll bring me flowers today? No, I don't think so, honey. It would be too much of a coincidence that he'd be called upon to be a pallbearer again this year. <laughs> well, I don't think you should pick on Al. After all, what did Richard give you last Valentine's? Well, he... He took me out to Leon and Eddie's. I think that was a dirty trick. What do you mean? Well, you'd think he'd want to be alone with you and not take you to two other fellows. <laughs> Sweetie, I've told you before, Leon and Eddie's is a nightclub. I don't know why you insist... Come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> Hello, Janie and Irma, my two little valentines. One with a heart of solid gold. The other with the head just as solid. <laughs> Why, Professor? Excuse me, Jenny, a little holiday sentiment. Well, Professor, I'm glad to see that Valentine's Day still means something to you. Oh, don't let my age fool you, girls. I may be an old man on the outside, but on the inside, when I'm with two pretty girls like you, yippee! <laughs> uh, you cute, Professor. As a matter of fact, I composed a little Valentine poem just for you. Oh, isn't that nice? Let's hear it, Professor. All right. Dear Janie and Irma, if I were married and had two daughters, I'd want them to be like you. 
but I'm not married and I have no daughters, so please excuse me if once in a while I say, kitschy, 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 coo. <laughs> Professor, you're priceless. Come in. Hello, girls. Oh, there you are, Professor. Happy Valentine's Day, Miss O'Reilly. Don't Valentine's Day me, you old snake in the grass. <laughs> girls, just wait till you hear this poem I left under my door. On this day of romantic bliss, I'd like to steal from you a kiss. Why, that's lovely. That's what I thought until I read the rest of it. Listen. <laughs> But then I see that face you're wearing, and I think it's better I should kiss a herring. (laughs) Oh, Professor, how can you say such things about Mrs. O'Reilly? I was only fishing for a laugh. Well, when I was younger, the men didn't make jokes about me. I was a very popular girl, and I had lots of bows. One of them I'll never forget. He was a balloon pilot. He used to take me up in the balloon and make love to me in the moonlight. (laughs) One time the balloon got out of control and we landed in the bottom of a rock quarry. Oh, it was quite an experience. The County Cork Gazette had the whole story on the front page. Balloon Bottom O'Reilly, they called me. Yes, in those days, I was full of life. Miss O'Reilly, I don't think you took out enough insurance. (laughs) Why, you dumb old clock, you? Oh, gee, look at the time. Al will be here soon. Uh, Jane, I think I'll go down and get him a little gift. If he calls, tell him I won't be long. All right, sweetie. Wait, Elmer, I'll walk down with you. Come in, Professor? Yes, I'll walk in back of you. In this wind, you'll need somebody to catch your eyelashes when they blow off. (laughs) (laughs) Hello. Oh, hello, Richard. Gee, it was nice of you to give us today off. What? There's a catch in it? What is it? You want me to meet you for cocktails? Oh, Richard, you make working for you so unpleasant. I'll be there in five minutes. Goodbye. Come in. Oh, hello, Jane. Where's Chicken? Oh, she'll be back in a little while, Al. She wants you to wait. Uh, well, what are those little heart-shaped packages under your arm? They're two boxes of candy. And boy, is my arm tired. Well, they don't look so heavy. Well, they're not, but you don't know how many baseballs I had to throw to get them. (laughs) One is for chicken, and the one with the blue ribbon is for my mother. I I don't see her often. I just write her letters, telling her I'm a big success. I want her to be proud of me. Why, Al, that's very sweet of you. It's nothing compared to what I'll be able to do when my latest deal comes in. Uh, Sorry, I can't wait. I've got to meet Richard. Well, you've got to listen to this one, Jane. It's a natural. A special invention for married men who lose their money at poker. When the wife goes through his pants pockets in the dark and don't find nothing and is just about to murder the husband, the wallet lights up and says, thanks for your contribution to the Red Cross. (laughs) Well, Jane, how does it strike you? Like a great, big, dazzling nothing. Uh, Your remarks don't faze me, Jane. They laughed at Madame Curie, but she kept right on working. Until the day came when she could give the world one of the greatest inventions of all time, the radium dial watch. <laughs> Look, Al, I've got to get dressed to meet Richard. Okay. We'll leave one box of candy here for chicken and take the other one to my mother. Uh, by the way, Al, how is your mother? Oh, pretty chipper. She expects to be rich someday. She just joined a pyramid club. <laughs> Happy Valentine. Now, where can I put this candy? Oh, we left the wrong box. Al? 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 Al! Oh, Al! Oh, he's gone. Hello, Mom. Alfred, my dear boy. Oh, I knew you wouldn't forget your mother on Valentine's Day. Well, of course not, Mom. Uh, It's good to see you. Wish I could make it more often. Oh, I understand, Alfred. And I read your letters again and again. (sighs) You executives are always tied down to your desks. (laughs) You're still president of U.S. Steel, aren't you? (laughs) Steel? Who, me? Oh, U.S. Steel, yeah. Of course, absolutely. (laughs) 
I knew that Mrs. Johnson needed glasses. Imagine her thinking she saw you standing in the unemployment line. <laughs> That's a good one, Ma. I must tell that to Harry. Harry Truman? Who else? <laughs> oh, Alfred. Oh, I'm so glad you never turned out like your father. I'm so proud of you. Oh, thanks, Mom, and I'm proud of you. Here's a little gift for you. Happy Valentine's. Oh, thank you, son. Uh, let me read the card. Yeah, go ahead, Mom. Though you are a little punchy, with those legs, I've got to love you, baby. <laughs> I... Alfred, what a terrible thing to say to your mother. Oh, murder. The boxes got mixed up. I better get the chicken before she reads the card in the other box. Only us again. We're just snooping around to see if Al bought you a present or if he's hiding like he does on all the other holidays. Oh, I just got in. And, oh, there's a package. I know it must be from my Al, my own darling Al. You see, he didn't forget you. Of course not. He loves me. If you could only hear some of the beautiful things he says to me when we sit in the dark on the sofa. Oh, I know how the, what a thrill it is, Irma. Many a man has whispered flattering things in my ear, too, in the dark. <laughs> and when the lights went on, he wanted to kill himself. <laughs> oh, hush, Professor. You yourself said that like a brave knight, you'd like to put me on a horse and leave for some faraway town. <laughs> no, you didn't hear me right. I said, from far away, you look like a horse, and if I were brave some night, I'd leave town. Gosh. Please don't quarrel. I'm opening the package. Don't you want to hear what Al says on the car? Go ahead, Irma. I know it must be tender. All right. You are still my first sweetheart, even though you're old and wrinkled. <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh, baby, how could they say a thing like that? I oh, must be a mistake. Oh, it is. It's in his own handwriting. Oh, I wish I were dead. Oh, my darling. Oh, please, don't try to comfort me. And if he thinks that about me, I, I know he doesn't love me. Irma, what are you doing with your hat and coat? I'm going back to Minnesota, back to the farm. Where the horses love me, and the cows love me, and the goats love me, and the pigs love me. And somewhere among them, I'll find someone to take the place of Al. Pep, 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 sedent toothpaste. Bites film on teeth and cleans breath too. Pep, 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 sedent toothpaste. Teeth, Don't think that you are safe from film. Run the tip of your tongue over your teeth. If you feel a slippery coating, you have film, and you need Pepsodent with irium to remove it. For film is worse than you think. Film collects stains that make your teeth look dull. But remember, Pepsodent toothpaste removes film, makes your teeth look bright. Film harbors germs that cause unpleasing breath. True, but Pepsodent removes film, makes your breath fresh and clean. Film glues acid to your teeth, the very acid many dentists agree is the cause of tooth decay. That's right, but Pepsodent toothpaste removes film and the acids it contains. Film never lets up. It forms continually on your teeth. Yes, you have to fight film every day. So brush your teeth twice a day with Pepsodent toothpaste because no other toothpaste can duplicate Pepsodent's film-removing formula. No other toothpaste contains irium or Pepsodent's gentle polishing agent. So start now to fight film with Pepsodent, the toothpaste with an exclusive formula for removing film. Cheer up, sister, and you too, mister. Pepsodent. Pepsodent. The paste for you. Although rich 
Gertrude whispers those sweet nothings a girl loves to hear on Valentine's Day, I just can't wait to get home. Why? Because Al has left the wrong gift for Irma, and I must get back and explain before it's too late. You see, I remember the time Al told her he got a letter from Virginia, and she cried for three days before she found out it was the name of a state. <laughs> so I'm taking no chances. Irma? Irma, are you home? Oh, is that you, Irma? Even with a wig on, I wouldn't look like Irma. <laughs> Professor, uh, have you seen Irma? Yes, Jenny, I did. I was here when she opened Al's box of candy. And there's the card. Card? Let me see. You are still my first sweetheart, even though you're old and wrinkled. Oh, Professor, he meant this for his mother. I tried to explain to Irma that it must be a mistake, but she left. Left? So she packed a suitcase and said she was going back to Minnesota. Oh, well, I'd better run down to the station before she gets on that train. Wait, I'll call the station. Maybe it's too early, maybe it's too late. Oh, we've got to do something. Oh, how much longer must I go on living with desperate Dora? Hello, Grand Central. When is the next train to Minnesota, please? Two hours. Thank you. Two hours? Yeah. I wonder what she's doing in the meantime. Well, the average person would probably make their reservations, get the magazine, sit in the waiting room, maybe go to a movie. That's the average person. <laughs> now, let's see, what would Irma do? <laughs> Oh, that's the trouble. She's so unpredictable. The last time she got mad, I found her standing in front of the electric fan at Schraff's. That was her way of blowing her top. <laughs> I remember the time she drank 18 Cokes because she wanted to drown herself without getting a dress wet? Well, I, I wish I knew where to start looking. The poor dear is probably crying her eyes out. <laughs> playing the last part of that record again for me, mister? Not at all, miss. If you'll promise not to cry again. All right. Ain't what she used to be, ain't what she used to be, ain't what she used to be, the old gray mare. She ain't what she used to be many long years ago. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I can't help myself. You see, that's how my boyfriend describes me. I ain't what I used to be. <laughs> I'm old, Ringo. Old? He must be crazy. Why, to talk with you, I'd never take you to be more than six or seven. <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh, have I put you to any trouble? Oh, no, no. I've just been playing this record for you for half an hour. You've used up a whole box of my Kleenex with your tears. The record is worn out now, and I've only neglected three customers. Oh, well, I know this is a big business store, and, and you have big expenses, and I don't want you to lose any money on me, so I'll buy a package of needles. Do you have a Victrola? No, but when I get back to the farm, I'm going to forget about men and just spend my time sewing. <laughs> Oh, Professor, did you have any luck at the station? No, Jenny, I looked all over The baggage room, the waiting room, the restaurant She must be wandering around the city oh, Well, thanks anyway, Professor To follow her trail, what we need is a bloodhound With a mind like a corkscrew <laughs> Hey, maybe that's Irma Come in Hello, Jane Hi, Professor See, I made it just in time Happened to make a mistake with Irma's Valentine ca What's the matter with everybody? You look like the parole board Getting ready to turn a guy down Al, how could you have made a mistake like that? Well, guess Chicken feels bad about it, but you should have heard my mother. She thinks less of me than she does of my father. <laughs> Where's Chicken? Want to explain to her? Al, she's on her way to Minnesota. Minnesota? Well, she can't do that to me. Chicken is all I got. Why are we standing here? Let's do something. Let's go to the station. We got to stop Take her. Take it easy, Al. The professor has already tried to find her, and she isn't at the station. The only thing we can do now is wait for train time and then try again. Cannot do that, Jane. Not gonna let my poor sweet chicken wander about thinking the world has come to an end. That she's lost the best thing she ever had. Me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cupid's gift to the world. What do you suggest? When everything else starts to fail, there's only one man to hail. Who else? Who else but... Hello, Joe. <laughs> Al, got a problem. 
When a dame runs out on you, what do you do? What? Lock the doors, bolt the windows, and celebrate? <laughs> no, no, Joe, that's all right for you. I've seen your wife. <laughs> now, my chicken is going away, and I can't live without her. What do I do? Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. Get my name in the obituary column, and then when she reads it, she'll cry. Yeah, but Joe, I'll have to be dead to get my name in that column. <laughs> what? That's your point? Any guy who will worry that much over one day ain't fit to live. <laughs> Joe, you ain't got no sentiments, but thanks anyway, and goodbye, noble friend. Well, no help there. Jane, what are we gonna do? Look, Al, I'm just as much concerned about this thing as you are. Well, we are all concerned. Believe me, the old professor would miss her very much if she went away. She has a way of getting into your heartstrings and making them giggle. <laughs> Has anybody thought of checking with Mrs. O'Reilly? Chicken may have changed her mind and gone down there to pub. Say, that's an idea. Let's go down and look. Oh, the poor girl must be out of her mind. Then I'll go look in my room. Because if she was out of her mind, that's where she'd go. <laughs> <laughs> Look, miss, I don't own the railroad. I'm only the ticket seller, and I can't get you within a thousand miles of Minnesota on eight dollars. Well, I could send a telegram to my mother and have her pay the driver when the train gets there. <laughs> Sorry, can't be done. Well, maybe I can work my way across to Minnesota, you know, swabbing the deck or something. Uh, <laughs> look, miss, I'm busy and you're holding up the line. All right, and thank you. Watch your step, everybody. Arma Peterson, what are you doing here? Why, Officer Jones, what are you doing down here? I was transferred for going beyond the line of duty. I caught the sergeant's wife shoplifting. <laughs> but, Irma, what's the matter with you? You look like you've been crying. Well, you remember my boyfriend, Al, don't you? Oh, yes, indeed. How is the bum? <laughs> oh, well, he insulted me on Valentine's Day, so I'm going back to Minnesota. There, there, now. Don't let anything like that make you go back home, honey. New York is full of men. Now, why don't you just go back to Janie and forget that unemployed nobody? But I don't want to. But, Irma, I know how much Janie loves you, and anything like this is liable to break her heart. Oh. Well, gosh, I, I never looked at it that way. Sure. Well, maybe you're right. I, I'll go back home, but I'm through with that. <laughs> That's a girl. Here, Officer Jones, will you take this, bar, this box of cigars? It's a valentine present I bought for Al, and there's no point in me keeping them. It doesn't look nice for a lady to smoke cigars. <laughs> well, thank you, Irma. Hmm. They smell like they come from Havana. No, they're from Macy's. <laughs> Uh-oh, here comes my boss. Irma, do you mind if I give the cigars to him? It might win me a promotion. No, I don't mind. I'm through with men forever, and... When I get married, if I have any children, I'll put dresses on all the boys. <laughs> Cannot understand how chicken could walk out on me like this. There's nothing left for me. Yes, I know. You've eaten every piece of candy in that box you bought. It. <laughs> in my grief, do I know what I'm doing? Let this be a lesson to all you men. We women have to be handled with gloves. You look like you've been handled by a claw machine. Ah, <laughs> uh, look here, you son of a stupid Oh, cook. Irma! Hello, Jane. Chicken! Don't talk to me. No, wait a minute, chicken. It's all a mistake. You got the card my mother was supposed to get, and vice versa. Oh, so that's what it was. Oh, oh, Al, I've been such a fool. Will you ever forgive me for doubting you? Of course, chicken. We're both high-strung, sentimental people. Right, Chicken? Right, Al. And uh, being you're so sentimental, tell me, uh, what did you get me for Valentine? Oh, dear. Chicken, you mean you forgot? Oh, no, in fact, I bought you a present, and I even wrote a cute personal card, but... Well, what happened to it? Well, uh, now, who can that be? Come in. Oh, it's, it's Officer Jones. Irma Peterson, you've got to help me out of this. This is my boss. I, I gave him your present and the card inside. Jones, you wrote that card. I know what you think of me. I'm going to detail you to Staten Island. 
Oh, please, please, Irma, save well, me. I'm sure this is all a mistake. What does the card say? Read it, officer. It says, this is to show you what I think of you, even though you have never made an honest dollar in your life. <laughs> That should explain everything. Oh, sure, that's a terrible thing to say to any man. I wrote it for my boyfriend, Al. Don't think that you are safe from film. Nearly everyone has it. Just run your tongue over your teeth. If you feel a slippery coating, that's film. And you'd better get Pepsodent toothpaste to remove it. For film collects stains that make teeth look dull. It harbors germs that cause unpleasing breath. Film glues acid to your teeth. The very acid that many dentists agree is the cause of tooth decay. And remember, film never lets up. So brush your teeth twice a day with film-removing Pepsodent. No other toothpaste can duplicate Pepsodent's film-removing formula. Get Pepsodent with Irium today. Pep, pep, Pepsodent toothpaste bites film on teeth and cleans breath too. Pep, pep, Pepsodent toothpaste gives film on teeth the old skidoo. Valentine straight. And then we went out with Richard to a cafe and we dined and danced and had a merry time. Yes, every one of us entered into the spirit of St. Valentine's Day with gusto. Then came the check. My eyes almost popped when Al was the first to grab it. He took out his fountain pen, drew a large heart across the top of it, handed it to Richard and said, Happy Valentine. <laughs> But Richard was his own gracious self and accepted it with a smile. Now, Irma and I are home and ready for bed. She's on her knees saying her prayers. And I promise I'll never doubt Al again. But if I do, would you mind reducing the fare to Minnesota? <laughs> and if she takes the super chief, I'm sure that for the next hundred years, he will say ugh every time he thinks of my <laughs> friend Irma. <laughs> My Friend Irma is produced and directed by Cy Howard. Park Levy writes the script with Stanley Adams and Roland McLean, and it is brought to you by Pepsodent Toothpaste with Arium, another fine product of Lieber Brothers Company. Marie Wilson is starred as Irma, with Joan Banks as Jane. The part of Al was played by John Brown. Hans Conried was heard as Professor Kropotkin, and Gloria Gordon as Mrs. O'Reilly. Music was under the direction of Led Gluskin. This is Wendell Niles speaking. B-R-I-S-K, brisk flavor. That's what you get in Lipton tea. Yes, brisk flavor that picks you up, brings you back alive in a hurry. Brisk flavor that comes from Lipton's very special blending of the finest orange pico and pico teas. Try it. You'll find that this brisk flavor of Lipton's leaves you refreshed and ready to go again. And you can enjoy it often, because even wonderful tea like Lipton's costs less than any drink except water. Always ask for Lipton tea, the brisk tea, with that heartwarming Lipton lift. Tune in one hour earlier next week and listen to the Lux Radio Theater, followed by the Pepsi and Show, My Friend Irma. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>